Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now for today's invasive species episode, we'll be heading over to the UK. And as some of you may know, I live in this rainy miserable kingdom, so this has been one of the easier videos to research, as all the species I'll be going through today I've either seen myself or I'm very familiar with. But as I've done so many videos on invasive species, I have been through some of the main invasive creatures in the UK, so because of that I will not be including the signal crayfish, the pink salmon, the pumpkin seed fish, or the American mink. But instead today I'll be going through five invasive and introduced species in the United Kingdom. And to start off we'll be heading to the eastern United States as we have the eastern grey squirrel. Now in its native range this squirrel plays an important role in the ecosystem. This is mainly as a forest regenerator as they eat and store nuts and seeds which in some cases sprout into new plants and woodland. They are a relatively large squirrel reaching a maximum size of around 30 centimeters with their tails measuring around 24 centimeters. In the US there are quite a few different species of squirrel and because of this the eastern grey has some healthy competition but still tends to be one of the most common species. The grey squirrel was first released into the UK in 1876. This introduction was done by the Victorians for reasons unknown. This introduction had disastrous consequences for our native squirrels and the effects can still be seen today. In the UK today there are two species of squirrel, the invasive grey squirrels and our native European red squirrels. Our red squirrels are thought to number around 140,000 whereas the invasive grey squirrels are thought to number around 2.5 million. And if you venture into most woodlands in the UK, if you spot a squirrel, it's almost certainly going to be a grey squirrel. As the grey squirrels are larger than our native red squirrels, they were easily able to outcompete them and also outbreed them. As grey squirrels have a prolific breeding cycle, female squirrels sometimes having two litters of young per year. And if these advantages weren't enough, grey squirrels are also carriers of squirrel pox, which often proves fatal to red squirrels, causing their numbers to plummet even more. And as grey squirrels have been invasive for so long, the damage is mostly irreversible, as most efforts are put into helping the native red squirrels and trying to limit the spread of the grey squirrels. But in recent years one predator has proven to be an unlikely hero, as red squirrels tend to do better in places with lots of pine martens. These woodland predators tend to prey on the grey squirrels more, as they're both a larger meal and easier to catch. And although populations of red squirrels are stabilising in Scotland, they have mostly been driven out of the rest of the UK, so this really is one American invader that's really taken over Britain. But for our next species we'll be heading over to continental Europe, as we have the alpine newt. These amphibians are normally found in elevated forested areas where their behaviour and lifestyle is dependent on the seasons, as they tend to hibernate through the winter, normally in decomposing vegetation or under tree logs. They come out of hibernation in the spring, where they usually move to aquatic environments, such as small pools, puddles and ponds, and in these waters they mainly feed on aquatic invertebrates and insects. This amphibian was first sighted in the UK in Surrey during the 1920s. These were thought to be intentionally introduced or escaped pets. Today they have been spotted in 40 different locations, but are not seen as a problem invasive species. This is because they're yet to become established and are not able to spread very easily. In the UK there are three native newt species, with one of them being found in my back garden. The largest species, the great crested newt, can grow up to 17 centimetres long, so the alpine newt really doesn't compare when it comes to size. The main negative impacts of this species invading the UK is that they will compete with our native newts and that they're also carriers of diseases and infections. But luckily today there are only a small number of these creatures in the UK and they don't seem to be spreading very quickly, as they're preyed upon by birds snakes and fish, and this means that they're limited to smaller aquatic habitats. So although I wouldn't really call it invasive, it is a non-native amphibian living in the UK. But for our next species we'll be heading over to Africa as we have the Egyptian goose. This species got its name because these geese were considered sacred by the ancient Egyptians. They appeared in much of their artwork and have their own part in Egyptian history, but today they're rarely seen in Egypt and are mainly found throughout sub-Saharan Africa. Still to reach a maximum size of around 73 centimeters or 29 inches, which makes it a pretty decently sized bird. In a native range they typically eat seeds, leaves, grasses and plant stems and are typically found around wetland areas. The Egyptian goose has been in the UK since the 1800s as it was kept as an ornamental bird normally on private lakes and ponds. But many of these populations escaped into the wild and have successfully bred in their feral state. There are thought to be around 1,100 breeding pairs in the UK today, mainly along the east of England. Some of the impacts that this goose has on the British ecosystem is that they compete with our native birds and are known to be quite quarrelsome and aggressive. This can often scare off more timid birds, meaning that they can dominate a food source. This species has not only proven to be a problem in the UK, but has also spread into other parts of Europe. So this sacred Egyptian goose has found a new home in some parts of Europe. But for our next species we'll be heading over to China and Taiwan, as we have the Chinese muntjac. This deer is a relatively small species
species, growing to around half a meter or one foot eight inches at the shoulder. This tiny deer is also famous for having fangs, which can make them look like a vampire deer hybrid. In their native range, they feed on herbs, blossoms, succulent shoots, fungi, berries, grasses, and nuts. This diet means that they do very well in deciduous and coniferous forests, generally with a diverse understory. These deer are often easier to find than some other species of deer, as they emit a large barking sound when threatened or alarmed. The species was introduced into Woburn Park in Bedfordshire in 1838. They adapted very well to the English ecosystem and soon spread into the surrounding area. The Munjat deer is not the only introduced deer into the UK, as there are currently six species of deer in the UK, with only two of them being truly native. But the Munjak has proven to be the most successful of the invaders, with an estimated population of around 40,000. One of the main reasons for their rapid spread is that they don't have a defined rut. Instead, they tend to breed all year round, which means they breed a lot faster than our native deer. One of the main negative impacts of this species is that they can decimate forest understories as they're prolific browsers and will often feed on large amounts of woodland shrubs, herbs and brambles. And the clearing of woodland understory has been linked to declines in species such as nightingales. So even though they're a cute small deer, they are widely seen as a pest over many parts of the UK. Before our final species, we'll be heading to the southeast of the United States as we have the yellow-bellied slider. These small reptiles are normally found in floodplain swamps, marshes and seasonal wetlands. And in these areas, they mainly feed on aquatic plants insects and small fish. And on this diet they can reach maximum size of around 33 centimeters or around 13 inches across the carapace. And just like the closely related red ear slider, they are a notorious invasive species around the world and not just the UK. This is mainly due down to the fact that they're very popular in the pet trade and irresponsible pet keepers sometimes release them into the wild. And this video comes out at a very strange time as there's been a spate of exotic reptile releases into the UK with a number of large pythons being released over the last few weeks. And this is not just irresponsible but it's also very cruel. As the UK isn't the best place for reptiles, as we have quite a cold climate, with there being only six native species in the whole of the UK. So any released pets will soon die or starve because of the mildness of the British climate. And although the yellow belly slider does hibernate, meaning that it can live in some colder climates, it still has a rough time in the UK, as it's thought that released terrapins and turtles have a mortality rate of around 40 to 80% in the UK, as the yellow bellied slider only tends to feed when the temperature is above 16 degrees Celsius. And if they don't get enough food in the summer, it means that they won't have enough fat stores to survive through their hibernation. But despite this, there are thought to be around 4,000 feral terrapins in the UK, and as there are no native animals like the yellow-bellied slider in the UK, they can soon completely take over ecosystems if the weather is favourable. And these yellow-bellied sliders, along with other non-native species in the UK, cost the economy around £1.7 billion per year. So unfortunately, this is another problem that's been caused by irresponsible pet owners. But that's about it for this video. If you have any locations that you want me to cover in the next episode and let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye. <laughs>